So although according to Hamza, I didn't benefit from the scholars or the books of the Salaf, from the usul of Ahl Sunnah is refuting Ahl Bid'ah. So I'm declaring that now and stating that as I've said countless over the year, countless times over the years. And as our Sheikh details in his explanation of Shara Sunnah, we're talking about Sheikh Salim bin Fozan, according to Hamza, I didn't read or benefit from, uh, from this book and he advised me to do so. But in fact, I've listened and have studied this with several ulama. Uh, and regarding the issue of refuting someone, uh, a mukhalif. So this is from Imam Barbahari's explanation. Sheikh uh, Ubaid uh, mentioned two in points. We're just going to make it concise. He said the people are divided into two uh, types regarding the issue of uh, of going off the uh, the path where Imam Barbahari mentions this. He said number one is if the mistake is from a Sunni, meaning they're Salafi, they're on the usul of Ahl Sunni Tibul Jama'ah, then you refute the mistake and you maintain respect for the individual. If the person is a Mubtadi'ah in their usul, as we already mentioned this, then we refute the mistake uh, in this individual and we do not have, uh, we do not maintain any respect for them. That doesn't mean we lie about them. That doesn't mean we describe them in evil characteristics which are unbefitting but rather we always maintain justice we're always always ordered to maintain justice with the people so I'm not sure where did I fall according to Hamza it seems to me that I'm a Muqtadiyah according to him who initially did not give me salams even when he addressed me and then he attacked my minhaj so that makes for me that's evidence that he believes I'm a Muqtadiyah and I'm not deserving of any kind of respect. Wallahu musta'an. Another point we want to gain from this, refuting is from preserving the religion and commanding the good. So we know it's from Amr bin Maruf and Nahin al-Munkar to refute the Mubtadi'ah. So claiming my knowledge is weak, but your claims are similar uh, to something which has no substance. And then it seems to me that you turn around and fail to learn the issues of Ahl Sunnah, which is clear from the claims that you made against me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَطْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you order the people with good, with bitter, you know, piety? and and you forget yourselves. kitab, and you read the book. Do don't you have any intellect? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. So don't command the good and make claims, false claims about individuals, because they're false claims. And it shows that you are reading the book and you're not commanding those principles and making tatbiq upon yourself. Allah, uh, the Prophet said, "Man ra'a minkum munkar in fali ghayra hu biyad, fa in lam yastatifa bi lisani, fa in lam yastatifa bi qalbi, wa thalik adaf al iman." The Prophet said in, in a hadith in uh, uh, Sahih Muslim, "Whoever sees uh, uh, a munkar, then change it uh, with his hand. If he's unable to, then change it with his tongue. Speak out against it. If he's unable to do, then change it with his heart." And that's the weakest of Iman, meaning hate it in your heart. Qala Sufyan al-Thawri la ya'maru bil ma'roof wa la tanha an al-munkar illa man kana fihi thalatha khasal. Rafiq bima ya'mar, rafiq bima yanha, adalun bima ya'mar, adalun bima yanha, alamun bima ya'mar al-alam bima yanha. And this is Akhraju Marawdi fi al Wara. So in this hadith, and in this uh, uh, Athar of Sufyan al Thawri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Do not command the good and do not forbid the evil except. Uh, or, or one does not command the good and one does not for forbid the evil except if they can t contain three characteristics. That they are gentle in the things that they command with. That they are gentle in what they prohibit with. 
that they are just with those issues that they command and they are just in those issues that they prohibit and that they have knowledge of what they're commanding about and they have knowledge of what they're prohibiting and this you'll find as Hamza uh, claims and 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 uh, in a book of al wara the book is entitled al wara which is referring to humility uh, that it shows us that the Salaf uh, gave precedence to things like manners. So Menbaba Ola, for those people who claim to follow the Salaf Asari, that they should be concerned about manners. Manners is very important for us. Don't underestimate manners and don't let people tell you that manners are not important for Salafis, that all you need is Aqidah. No, the religion is complete. We need to practice all of the deen and make tatbiq because this is follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. What's the delil for that? What's the delil for that? Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ma min shayin athkulu fi mizan al-mu'min yawm al-qiyama min husn al-khulq wa inna allaha yubghidu al-fayshah al-badi The Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there isn't a thing heavier on the scale of the believers on the day of judgment than good manners than good manners. The Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this. He said that are that th there's not a thing heavier on the scales. We know that, of course, Tawheed, Aqidah, those things take precedence. But it shows us that from our deeds and our mu'amalat, husn al khulq weighs heavy on our scales. So Ahl Sunnah gives precedence to good manners. And I asked the brother, were you gentle with your claims in the in the the way you spoke to me and the way you addressed me? Uh, just with claims and enjoining the supposed good. You know, were you just with your claims? Ask yourself this. Were you knowledgeable in the claims? As we get all this from this Athar, uh, were you knowledgeable about the things you were claiming? Or have we, or are we going to illustrate that you were false in those claims? Well, Allah Mista'an, in the way that you came. It's false. You didn't base anything on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we mentioned speculating and, and inferences about what I said and what I meant. You read into what I said and put it and said, oh, you're talking about s pubs in Troy. Oh, you're doing this. Oh, you meant this. All of this vain and, 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 and this, this uh, speculation, this is not ilm. This is van. And in fact, it's suavan. Most of your inferences were based on suavan. They're based on a type of suspicion and a wicked... Uh, uh, pessimistic view instead of based on ilm and yaqeen on what I said and making a judgment based upon what is said and based upon evidences so those are some of the important things that we have to look at we have to realize this from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to practice good manners I want to read some of the fatawa of the ulama and I hate that this took so long but I have so much to say, Wallahu Musta'an, and we'll try to be as brief as possible as I usually say this. So some of the statements of the scholars regarding uh, the issues raised so far. Number one, uh, Sheikh Falah Ismail, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he was asked uh, uh, about how should a beginning student of knowledge be involved in declaring a person an innovator? He says, no, it is not permissible for a beginner student of knowledge to declare someone to be an innovator even if his innovation is apparent to him after the proof has already been established against him. As long as he is a beginner student of knowledge, if he wants to advise his innovator, if he wants to advise his innovator, he can. As far as the layman is concerned, then they are to stay away from him, the innovator, and not approach him with advice. It is upon him, the student of knowledge, to get the ruling for the innovation this person is upon from the senior scholars. Meaning Ahla Elm, these issues are reserved for Ahla Elm, not everybody should be involved. You referred to Sheikh Obeid. Let's hear what Sheikh Obeid has to say about these issues. Sheikh Obeid was asked about this as well. He says, yes, it is correct that with the layman, we must not warn them, this is far, as far as the tarbiyah, of involving the lay persons in these issues of tabdi, these, you know, these big issues in Masail, and giving them this kind of tarbiyah, instead of teaching them uh, aqidah and the things that they need, how to pray, how to worship Allah, how to have some mu'amalat. He says, yes, it is correct that with the layman, we must not warn them from specific innovators before teaching them the sunnah. 
and then we must teach them what innovation is and then we warn them from specific innovators. This is because our call, the call of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is wisdom. Like Allah said to his Prophet وسلم, and the speech is general encompassing him and every caller to Allah upon wisdom, call to the way of your Lord with wisdom, good admonishment and argue with them in a better way. So it shows us not everybody should be involved in these affairs nor should we busy everyone in these affairs. Sheikh Bazmul said, uh, Allah Ta'ala, this is regarding the mistakes of your brothers. Uh, he said, it's not from the Sunnah rejoicing at the mistakes of your brothers, vilifying them, and then causing problems for them. Rather, Allah is Al-Hayt, one who does not like to expose the sins, and he is Satir, one who conceals, and he loves for the sins of the people to be concealed. Indeed, Allah is gentle and loves gentleness in all affairs of the Muslims. So, do not delight at the misfortune of your brothers. This is from the Bab of Tarbiyah, that we should begin to give this, that we should not be happy about the mistakes. We shouldn't even be happy about the mistakes of Ahl Bidah. They make their own. We want to see them come, especially those who are knowledgeable about the Sunnah, we want to see them come back to the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Our Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Masin al abad said, the obligation, and this is about hunting, uh, the issue of hunting for the mistakes of people, going through their YouTube channels, going through their pages and all their books, with the intent to just find their mistakes and combing through, not for the sake of research to refute properly someone from Ahl Bidah, but going through the speech of your, your, your Salafi brothers, Wallahu Musta'an. He said, the obligation upon every Muslim, upon the students of knowledge, is to fear Allah, Azzawajal, and to busy themselves with seeking knowledge, and to be eager with acquiring it, and to know the truth or the past that the major scholars are upon, such as Bin Baz, uh, Bin Uthaymeen, uh, Ashanqiti, and al Albani, meaning the people should be eager to be upon that which those major scholars who busy themselves with knowledge were upon. As for the state of these people, some uh, who busy themselves with he said, she said, and follow the mistakes or search for the errors, uh, then and then warn from individuals due to the fact that he has this or that or that he's gotten this or that then busying himself with this distracts from uh, knowledge it is not upon him to busy himself with that it is upon the people themselves uh, to be eager in seeking knowledge from the people of knowledge and return to them uh, so if there comes a mistake from them and he is from Ahl Sunnah those who busy themselves with knowledge do not abandon, reject, and warn from him. Rather, you should benefit from him and reject his mistakes and warn from his mistake as well. So this shows us the proper minhaj of dealing with one another, especially dealing with uh, Ahl Sunnah. There's so much uh, to say, uh, and, and so many of the ulama uh, mention mention these issues so it's upon our brother to return to them and I advise myself and my brothers and sisters to do so let's get now to the claims that he made let's actually get to what he his claims because that was really you could say my muqaddama my introduction so first the first claim the brother said he said I am not openly speaking about Sheikh Hajuri because I fear Allah uh, and he inferred and assumed is that I claim that the scholars don't fear Allah because they those scholars who speak about him okay I'm not a defender of Hajuri and I've already mentioned that and I already mentioned that I have issues with him however I refrained from involving myself in spreading that and taking a mokif making a uh, enmity and spreading that between the people those are my personal stances I don't I prefer not to take knowledge from him and I see mistakes but I did not spread that I did not spread that until recently, until being asked about it. But Hamza wants to make Ilzam about this issue. So, in accordance with his claim, first we have to look. Qali Imam al Dhahabi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in this regard, he said, Well, Kalam Firijal. لا يجوز إلا لتمام المعرفة and uh, uh, لتام المعرفة وتام الورع. Look at this. 
He's talking about the Ruat. He's talking about the science of Jodhwa Ta'adil. That it requires, he said, it's not permissible, uh, you know, to speak about a person unless the person has complete marifa, meaning they have knowledge about the person they're, they're refuting and they're, they're critiquing. And, and, the, and the other things they require knowledge about. And also completeness and wara, that they have humility. This, is, this has to do with taqwa, what we're talking about. When I said I fear, uh, fear the law about this, because I know that I, I don't follow up the mistakes of the people, so I don't need to talk about them then. And I know that I have enough of my own sins to busy myself with. So I try to choose to, unless I feel it's very necessary to speak about, about, about a ma'ayin, a specific individual, then I don't speak. But no, Hamza wants to make ilzam of me as he makes ilzam, or many of the people make ilzam of the, the, the lay persons to get involved in these affairs. Well, Allah must add. Sheikh Abdul Mersin said, Ain yataqi Allah men ashgala nafsuhu bi tajrih al ulama wa talabat al ilm wa tahdir minhum. For you shuggle bil bath an ayubihi li to khalas minha. Bedlin minish tegal bi ayub al akhirin. So uh, Sheikh Abdul Mersin said, he said, Fear Allah. He said that it is uh, that a person should fear Allah, the one uh, uh, with regards to themselves, to busy themselves with uh, criticizing the scholars and the students of knowledge and warning against them and busying themselves with research into their faults and mistakes. Instead, that they should. Uh, they should busy themselves with their own mistakes instead of busying them and getting rid of their own sins and mistakes instead of that of other people. So this is from the Bab. Uh, the point being here, yes, I fear a law in this matter, and I am busy with my own shortcomings, so do not attempt to lie or infer by claiming that I claim those scholars do not fear a law. This is the most ibtal al batil you know, this is a, a wicked falsehood, and you'll be held accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because at this stage, I don't forgive you. They are better than me in every way, and they fear Allah more than me, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and their status and manzil is better than me. So they involve themselves in those issues. I don't. They're ahlan for that. So I don't. So don't make ilzam of the people if they're not ahlan for that thing you want them to, to do. Wallahu musta'an. The second point, dear Hamza mentioned, I have my own stance which is arrogant. So he said I'm, I'm arrogant, basically, and I don't know any... Uh, I, I'm arrogant and I don't know my level, he said, Be and because I should follow the scholars. This is the age-old claim groups of brothers always say, you're not following the scholars. They mention one, two, three scholars, you're not following the scholars. You didn't take the position of so-and-so. Khalas, you're off it, you're a muqtadiya. This is kind of bida in ilzam of the people to make taqlid of one, two, three, or four scholars has been going on for ages. And it's time to cease. Because it's a bida. It's a bida. You cannot make ilzam of the people to, to make taqlid just because you make taqlid or because you find that to be the truth. That's not what the ilm and the fiqh is supposed to be about. And if you hold me accountable, I'm not taking the position of particular mashayikh, or at least I'm not openly doing it. What about Sheikh Fozan who takes the opposite position? That it's recently come out that he actually uh, holds the opposite view. Are you claiming Sheikh Fozan doesn't know who the scholars are? Are you claiming Sheikh Fozan uh, doesn't know the affairs? SubhanAllah. Look at this. So, what I would say is, likewise, can we say that Sheikh Salih bin Fazan is supporting or quiet on falsehood? Is this your claim? I can't say that you're claiming that, but the point I'm trying to bring up is by you inferring, inferring that I'm taking this position Likewise, it would be befitting because Sheikh Bozan holds an opposite view 
that you hold him accountable because he's Alan for that. Wallah Musta'an. Your third claim, I have I, I have a problem with his manners. That the only reason I spoke about Hajuri or mentioned that is because I said I had a problem with his manners. And of course when I meant when I mentioned manners, I wasn't talking about his adab and eating or how he you know his general daily interactions but I, I mentioned some of his statements that I felt were extreme and harsh and I and I made clear that that wasn't the only reason but that was sufficient for me that was sufficient for me Wallahu Musta'an and we already talked about uh, 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 many issues related to mannerisms <clears throat> In this uh, regard, regarding the following of the scholars, uh, Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi mentions, "Leis min min haja salaf asali ilzam bi attiba qul ahad illa Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam khassatin fi masaila ijtihadiyah." So Sheikh uh, Saleh Suhaimi mentioned that it is not from the min haja the salaf. So this is why I say you should need to return and study. The minhaj, you're the one making false claims which go against what the scholars say. Here's what Sheikh Saleh, uh, Sheikh uh, Suhaimi says, and how many other mashaykh say this, because this is a, a, a principle. He said, it is not from the minhaj, but you say it's from the minhaj. It's not from the minhaj of the son of Saleh to make ilzam, to force the people to follow a particular statement of anyone. Except for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and especially in issues of ijtihad. What did Imam Malik say when he was teaching in the Haram? He said, Kul, uh, everyone, everyone's statement can be rejected or accepted. Illa sahib the qabr. He said, except for the person, the inhabitant of that grave, and he pointed to the grave of the mess in the direction of the grave of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, letting us know that all of us. Uh, you know, you know, ha have correct views and incorrect views, and by you forcing the people to follow the views, believing that an alam or some ulama never make mistakes in their ijtihad or in their hukum on on someone else, this is false, and that's why you cannot make ilzam of the people in this. But we make il we instead we are. Uh, we follow, we have ittiba al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we go with the dalil. Where's the strongest evidence? Perhaps I see other evidence uh, with regarding a particular individual and this happens all the time between the ulama. Well, why do we have so much tafarak right now? A lot of it is based on making tatbiq or, or rulings on particular individuals and the scholars differing over that and unfortunately it sometimes goes into hatred and enmity and refutations on one another and declarations of tahazzab against one another and tabdeer. Wallah musta'an. Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi also said a Salafi scholar may criticize another Salafi scholar and exaggerate his errors due to some shortcoming he has. And that does not necessitate his fall, meaning that, that this brothers, this Salafi scholar is no longer Salafi. Because just because someone refutes someone doesn't mean they've taken them off the minhaj. So we have to understand that. That's something we also need to, to uh, internalize and, and understand. We should be positive and that the speech of that alam is a, is a result of ijtihad. So when we make this these uh, ahkam, this is ijtihadat of the ulama. My point is, do not require me to accept your view just because you make taqlid in this issue, or perhaps maybe you do it based on ilm. So it's either one of the two, either you are making taqlid, or you are looking into those issues, and you've looked at uh, the statements of Hajuri, and you've looked at the statements of the ulama, those ulama that refute him, or make tibdi of him, and you are actually looking at it as a masai, uh, as these are masai al niya and you're looking in them, and then you are making a, uh, your view based upon ilm. And this is, this is khayr. But don't make ilzam of the other people to follow you. This is the point. Another point the brother mentioned, he, he made another claim. What does an innovator have with Allah you say? He can make tawbah. Okay? An innovator can come away from his sin. He can, he can make tawbah. 
unless you are tikfiri and you believe that innovators uh, of course we know that there's two types of innovation there's bid'a uh, bid'a mukaffara or bid'a ghayra mukaffara there's bid'a which takes you out of the fold of Islam and there's bid'a which uh, a person uh, has fallen into that does not take them out of the religion so my advice is is keep seeking knowledge and avoid uh, getting into this controversy because it it only belittles you and it takes away from your elm and your your status especially if you're not Ahlan for that and leave that to the scholars another claim uh, the brother made or in regard to the Sheikh Salih Sahemi said Laysa min as-salafiyya al-farh bi-uyub al-nas bi-aib al-nas wa tajrihim wa sa'i fihi li ghayra haja wa ala talib al-ilm tujannab al-khawd fihi wa tarq al-amr bi-yad ahl al-ilm fa la yatasabab fi ish'al al-fitna wa qad al-awariha bil يخمد الفتنة باعتزاله نارها بصبر والظن الحسن وأن يوكل الأمر لأهل العلم. So this is very excellent advice from our Sheikh Sheikh Salih Suhaimi. He said it is not from Salafia to be happy with the sins of people and to criticize them and strive without the need to. Without the need to to you know to refute them and deal with their their sins and their ayub, and he said it's upon the students of knowledge to avoid involving themselves deeply in these issues, and to leave these affairs to the scholars. So do not be a reason for spreading fitna and for uh, strengthening and, and making fitna increase. Rather, fitna can be put out, you know, similar to a fire, with patience and with having a, a, a positive outlook and leaving those fairs, affairs to the scholar. So that's advice for Hamza. First, uh, that it's not from the Tao of Ahl Sunnah to spread fitna. Secondly, leave it to the scholars. You know, the youth should not be involved in this. We should not busy our communities. Uh, with these issues. The people don't need to know. If the people, for example, uh, this is not from the Minhaj, the Salaf, for example, to bring issues that the people don't know. So one mistake that the brothers have made over the years, for example, make an empty hand of the people about Abu, uh, Abu Hassan Ma'rabi. Abu, Has, Abu Hassan Ma'rabi is a Mubtadi'a. Did the people in America, he has no books that are translated, not that I know of, in English. So going to an English-speaking people making empty hand of the people, the people who don't know Tawheed, the people who don't know Fiqh, the people who don't know much about the religion and making empty hand of them and busying them and involving them deeply in those affairs, is that from Fiqh for Deen? That's my question to you. Maybe you have an answer that goes against all these things that I've been studying because I, I, I don't see it. Uh, another claim the brother mentioned or also regarding this, uh, one of the statements that uh, Sheikh Suhaimi mentioned, he said, "Da'aba ba'd al-nas ala tasarra' fi isdar al-ahkam ala ikhwanihim al-jazafa." دوني تثبت ولا رؤية فقد يحكم بتبديل وتفسيق وتكفير ووجوب الحجر والإخراج من السلفية وتحذير من بعض المشايخ وطلاب العلم السلفيين وإسقاط. so we'll stop there because it's going to get too long. Sheikh Sheikh Sahemi mentioned that some of the people they're quick to make a ruling on other people. On their brothers, without tafabbut, without looking, you know, without without making sure, you know, of the evidence. Instead, they quickly they quickly make a hukum. And without seeing, you know, without uh, seeing the mistake, 
or knowing and affirming that it's a mistake or affirming the mistake. And they may rule with, you know, calling them an innovator or a, a wicked sinner or even a, a kafir, takfir, or that it is an obligation to make hajr of them or removing them from salafiyah and warning from some of the scholars and some of the students of knowledge that are Salafis and trying to belittle and destroy them. And he said that this is a sickness from the individual and it is from his desires and his, his uh, oppressiveness in his, his oppressive thinking. Or it could be from hasid, from envy. Or it could be that he is relaying something which is weak in its narration about someone from someone who they believe that is thiqa, you know, that is from the thiqat. So, for example, just to give a, a good surah of this, of what he's talking about, is if, for example, you say, I heard so-and-so, uh, I'm going to make a hukum on so-and-so, so-and-so is a mubtadiyah. Because my friend so-and-so, or brother so-and-so from masjid so-and-so, said so. But I didn't make tathabbat. Just because I trust him, he's my man. But he could be known for lying. He could be known for weakness in his, his uh, tasawwur of these masail. He could be, you know, for whatever, the, whatever his issue is, that he's weak and he's not really thiqa, but he may be thiqa to you, and then you make a hukum. These are dangerous things. But instead, you should make tathabbat. And this is what, uh, there's a lot of beautiful statements here. Uh, and I need to read this one because it's also very beneficial. We'll just translate it as best we can. So uh, also, the Sheikh said it's not from Salafia to be excessive, uh, you know, being hyperbolic in your language. How many refu refutations do we see? The brothers, they put in quotation marks, you know, or put in, uh, you know, and so and so he said this. And what he meant by this is this, this kind of language. So the Sheikh says, uh, you know, and being quick and, and, and criticizing without, you know, without affirming it, affirming that it's a mistake and following up the people's mistakes and forcing the people and forcing the people with things which they are not required to follow or believe about a particular individual. What's your position on, on, on so-and-so? What do you say about Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli? Oh, Muqtadiyah. You, you better change that mocha, brother, or we're going to continue to warn against you. These kind of things. Wallah, Mr. Or that they take people's speech out of context. Or that they don't have a good picture of, uh, you know, put it in a good light what the brother is saying but instead they give it the worst interpretation. And so the, uh, the Sheikh is saying, or also that they have ta'asab bil ashkhas, that they also have ta'asab, you know, blind prejudice towards particular individuals. I only follow these brothers. They, they, the haq is with them. I had so many people say to me about certain uh, organizations, you know, I like them, they're on the haq. What do you mean they're on the haq? Yeah, inshallah ta'ala they're Salafi you see bu yukhti they make mistakes and they're correct like all of us but to say someone is on the haq on, on, on every issues these are very dangerous things and this is a type of ta'asab this is a the doorway to ta'asab because then if you say Sheikh so and so is always on the haq or these groups are always on the haq then that means it necessitates that you're going to follow them in, in everything blindly following them regardless if it goes against the adilla, because maybe you don't have the ability to look at the adilla, or maybe you're too blind now because of your ta'asab. So anyway, these are just some of the issues the Sheikh mentioned that I wanted to highlight for our brother and our brothers and sisters that are listening. And I want to end with a couple of pieces of advice that come from the ulama, some of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah that are known to be from the Rabbaniyun, bi idnillah ta'ala, about this issue of being quick to make tabdi' of people and criticize people. Some very important nasiha for our brother. And may, us, may we all benefit from it, I mean. 
Qala Shaykh Muhammad ibn Saleh al Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, wa amma al Khatta fil Aqidah, fa in kana Khatta mukhalifin li tariq al Salaf, fa huwa dalal, bila shak, walakin la yuhkam ala sahiba ala sahibihi bi dalal, hatta tukum alayhi al Hujja, fa ida qamat alayhi al Hujja, wa asrara ala Khatihi. خطيه وضلاله كان مبتدعا فيما خالفه الحق. so this is a big faida from Ibn Thaymin and it shows that some of our ulama that they require especially when you're talking about fitna or mistakes between ahl sunnah that you should establish the proof or establish the evidence before you make tabdi of them. someone who's a soul is from Ahl Bid'ah that this does not necessarily apply but what it seems that the evidence suggests and what the scholars uh, some of the scholars are very openly alluding to like Ben Uthaymeen is saying and, uh, and some of the other ulama that I've read similar to this is that he said and as for a mistake in Aqidah that if this mistake uh, is a mistake that goes against the path of the Salaf, the way of the Salaf, then this is misguidance without any doubt. However, do not make a judgment on the individual that they are misguided until you have established the evidence to them. You know, you've provided them with the evidence. And then they continue in that mistake and that misguidance. Then this person is becomes an innovator in those things which they differed with regards to the truth, meaning in the issue that they had the mistakes in, not in everything they do. Uh, a last piece of advice that we want to end with, and this is advice regarding what you think is a mistake and how to deal with them. And this is, I hope, th at least this part that Hamza will listen to, because this is directly relevant to his many claims that he made, his false claims, they need to be called what they are, because they had no delil, they had nothing from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَلَا فَهَمَ السَّلَفَ الصَّالِحِ But rather, he was calling us to make, uh, you know, to return to a few scholars who he said knew these issues the best uh, irrespective of all these other ulama of Ahl Sunnah that are well known. So many others, why can't we go to other ulama from Ahl Sunnah? I mentioned Fuzan, you didn't mention any reply, but instead you mentioned a long reply about how Imam uh, Abdul Masin doesn't understand these affairs, that he doesn't read, and, and all these kind of things. Well, Allah is the So we end with this. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Min ikhtilaf ala husna niya, wala ijtihad, when ya'dhuruhum fi ma akhtau fi, wala mana an yatakallamu ma'ahum fi ma ya'taqiduna annahu khata. ليبينوا لهم هل الخط منهم أو من الذين قالوا إنهم أخطأوا لأن الإنسان أحيانا يتصور أن القول العالمي خطأ ثم بعد المناقشة يتبين له صوابه والإنسان بشر قال عليه الصلاة والسلام كل ابن آدم خطأ وخير الخطائين توابون أما أن يفرح بزل بزلة العالم وخطأه ليشيعها بين الناس فتحصل الفرقة فإن هذا ليس من طريق السلف. So Sheikh Saleh bin Fuzan is warning against spreading these kind of fitna and spreading the mistakes of the people and advising us to advise people. So here's what he said. He said, you know, and when, when there's ikhtilaf, there's differences, then when you have these differences, you should have a correct intention. And the and especially these issues are related to ijtihad. And that, you know, those youth, they should make excuses or they should excuse those who have made 
that they have made those mistakes in those issues. And, you know, they should make excuses for them, not be quick to just make to D of them. And there's no problem with speaking to them about those issues that they believe that the person is mistaken in. In order to make clear for them is the mistake from them or not? Or is it from the person who is claiming it's a mistake? So meaning sometimes a person tries to refute someone, but in fact they're mistaken. They, they're refuting someone's mistake they believe, but they're the one Aslan who has the mistake. So then they could in fact be refuting the Haq. But by having these discussions in these monakasha, then the Haq hopefully will become clear for them. And this is what I'm trying to uh, point out to the brother, is that he made many false claims against us based on falsehood and batin. So now that I have refuted him, and may Allah accept it as something good, not evil, hopefully it, it brings clarity to the issue to him or at least someone else. By the statements of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those many statements of the ulama and the contemporary scholars dealing with some of these specific issues. Then uh, the Shaykh bin Uthameen said, because a person sometimes they think something, a statement of an alam is a mistake. Then after discussing it, it becomes clear the truth, which is the opposite. And people are people. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all the children of Adam make mistakes and the best of those are those who repent. The best of the people who make mistakes are those who repent. And he says, as for being happy about the mistakes of a, a scholar or, you know, declaring that he's mistaken, you know, being happy about this and spreading that between the people, which causes divisions, then this is not from the tariqah salaf. So understand, a lot of these practices we see with particular individuals is not from the path of the salaf, even if they claim it's from the salaf. And I'm going to end with this qaida. The scholars, they mention this fit principle, and you can apply it in the aqidah as well, and I've mentioned it countless times in my lectures. Al-ibra bi haqa'iq laysa bi musammiyat. That the proof or the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So for example, if some people try to distort Salafiyya and they bring up lies and false claims and false principles based on Batil and Hizbiyya and Ta'asr, that doesn't change the fact that what they're on is on Batil. It doesn't make it Salafiyya because they claimed it was Salafiyya, because they gave it the name of Salafiyya. So that's very important, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala